Are you a senior in high school and wondering what kind of things you need to do to make sure that you are ready to apply to and get into college this year? If so, in this video, I'm going to go through my senior year checklist. My name is Brooke. I am an SAT and ACT prep tutor and college consultant, and I've been helping students for over a decade and a half get into their dream schools, places like Stanford and Harvard. So I'm going to talk you guys through all the steps you need to take. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure that you do. And also check out supertutortv.com where we have the best ACT prep course ever and the best SAT prep course ever. I've scored perfectly on both the SAT and the ACT as an adult. And in these courses, I share with you all of my secret insider tips that I share with my private students. So definitely check those out if you are in the market. Also, subscribe to our mailing list. That's totally free. And we'll keep you in the loop of anything cool going on at Super Tutor TV, as well as any discounts on any of our products or new products that we're releasing, as well as new videos and information that might be of use to you senior year as you approach college admission time. Okay. I'm going to divide this into seasons because there's different seasons of senior year and there's different things that you should be doing depending on that season. The first season I'm going to talk through is the biggest one and that is summer slash fall. The reason I say summer slash fall is there's a lot of this stuff that you can get started on in the summer and start to investigate even though it's not fall yet and most of you have a little bit more time during the summer so that's usually a good move. My first tip is to make a college list. How do you make a college list? Well, we're going to be creating a video this summer to tell you more in detail how to make a college list. But my best advice is always make sure that you have some safety schools. Those are schools that have over a 30% admit rate. Some fit schools, those are schools that typically admit students who are in your range, where you're at like the 50th percentile or maybe even above for scores, including GPA and test scores, and maybe a couple of reach schools. After you make your college list, it's really important that you start to get organized. So to get organized, there's a few things that I recommend that you do. The first thing is make sure that you put all of your pertinent deadlines in your calendar. What that means is you need to go through all those schools on your college list and figure out what is their deadline for applications and make sure that you investigate if you're interested in any honors programs, any particular specialized departments, or any, say, scholarships that those colleges directly offer. The deadlines for applying given those circumstances might be earlier than the general application deadline. So make sure that you research all that, you check into all these schools you're applying to, and you know date-wise all the dates that you're responsible for knowing. And I also even recommend maybe making a spreadsheet of your college list and then creating columns where like general deadline, early application deadline, early decision deadline, etc. You also probably want to figure out at this point if you're going to apply somewhere early, which schools you want to apply too early, and we'll get into that when we talk about making a college list. Cool, so get all organized. The other thing, the third thing that I like to do, in addition to putting all my application deadlines down and sorting through any scholarship or other earlier deadlines, is making documents for all of the essays that you have to write. So I like to make Google Docs. You can use whatever document word processing software you like, but make some documents and get organized so that you have a document for every essay you're going to write or one big document. I usually don't like to do one big document, that gets crazy. But I can create a folder and in that folder I can put, you know, a folder for each school and then in each school I have a document for every essay that is going to get going and then in each document at the top is the prompt. So then you're like sort of all set up and ready to write your college essays. And that brings me to the next point on my list which is start writing essays. I always recommend if you have the time and it's still summer, it's a good time to start writing your essays. Though you can procrastinate to the last minute, I'm sure some of you watching this video are like, I have a week before my deadline. I don't have time to write in the summer, the summer is over. If so, that's okay. But if you have the time in the summer and you're ahead of the curve, go ahead and start writing your essays. That way you can come up with the best ideas possible. Make sure you pass it around to people you know. I've got lots of videos that give you tips on essay writing, so you should check those out on our channel as well. They can help you with brainstorming, essay writing, all that kind of good stuff, good topics to write about. Next, from your college list, make sure that you've taken all of the tests that you need to take and make sure that you get your test prep and testing dates in order. So if you haven't already taken the SAT or the ACT, which are usually required at most universities, make sure that you've set up a test date and that you have a prep plan in place. If you don't have a prep plan yet, make sure you check out our other videos. We have so many prep videos for free on Super Tutor TV. We also have the online prep course if you're looking for the full gamut at supertutortv.com. Either way, whoever you are, we have something for you. So definitely check out those resources. 
And then if you need to take subject tests or any other tests, let's say you're an international student, you might need to take the TOEFL. But make sure that any exams that you need to take or any other prerequisites that you fulfill those or you put them on your calendar, you go on those websites, you register for those tests and you get that all squared away. Okay, next tip. Talk to your parents about paying for college. Now, I know this one can be kind of awkward, but sometimes students don't sit down with their parents and figure out like, hey, who's gonna pay for college or how much money do we have to pay for college or how much of a scholarship do I need to get? So you might sit down with your parents and try to talk through expectations in terms of finances, what they're willing to pay, all that kind of good stuff. How much financial aid are you gonna need? Also talk to your parents about the FAFSA, and that's my next point. So the FAFSA is the federal forum that every student in America who is an American citizen that is applying to college and wants financial aid has to fill out senior year. It comes out on October 1st. So that's the first day that you can fill it out, but it's due February 1st. So put those dates on your calendar and figure out more about what that form is, what it requires. Talk to your parents about it. Make sure they know you're gonna need their tax returns and all sorts of stuff like that. We have a whole series on financial aid. It's called Free Money for College. Go check out those videos and we will walk you through all of the elements that go into finding scholarships and all that good stuff. Next on the list is to identify and research scholarships or financial aid. So in addition to just figuring out the FAFSA, which everybody has to fill out if you're applying for need-based financial aid, you're also going to need to look up like what kind of scholarships do you want to get or what do you want to check into or how much legitimately could you expect to maybe add into the pool for your college funding. Lots of resources out there. Again, our videos are a good place to start. You can start there and hopefully that will help. Cool. Next on my list of senior year items, clean up your social media accounts. So as some of you might know, colleges, when they're going through your applications, as soon as you hit submit in October to that first university, they might Google you, they might look you up online, make sure that you don't have your full, very unique first and last name on YouTube spewing out obscene comments on every video you can find. If you have behaved in ways on social media that maybe aren't wonderful and awesome or you don't want colleges to see, it's time now to clean that up before it's too late. Next on my list is ask some teachers to write you letters of recommendation. So when you apply to college, you're going to need letters of recommendation. Usually one of these is from a counselor and another one is from a teacher. And then sometimes schools will ask for a third or even fourth recommender. Sometimes one of those can be someone from the community, maybe somebody you worked for at an internship, a coach from outside of school, something like that. And if you feel like that would portray you in a good light, that's something you can do too. Another tip for letters of recommendation, pick people who have good stories on you. Stories are the bedrock of awesome letters of recommendation. So make sure you have people who know you well enough to tell stories. If they don't know you that well, their letter is probably going to seem really generic. But identify those people and ask them early on. That could even be the first week of school. You could go to them and say, hey, would you be willing to write a letter of recommendation for me? Awesome. Usually these are all done now through online portals. So you enter their email or you get their email address and usually it emails them everything like digitally. You can kind of check that out depending on which application you're using online. Your college counselor at school also can help you through this process and help you understand what the protocol is at your particular high school. Some high schools have particular rules in it. In any case, the first week of school is not too early to go and approach that teacher because sometimes teachers will have cutoffs. Sometimes they will get too overwhelmed or have too many students ask. So get in there early, be polite, tell your teachers the deadlines that you have when your application deadlines are so they get their letters in on time and then you can follow up with them politely if their letter isn't in by that deadline or the week before that deadline and just gently remind them all that kind of good stuff. Okay, next. Talk to your counselor and make sure all your transcripts and everything else from your school get sent. Oftentimes this is automatic with some school counselors, but just make sure that you're communicating with your school counselor and that your transcript, your official transcript is sent anywhere that needs an official transcript. Not all schools do, but a lot of schools do, so make sure that you get all of that in line. The next is visit colleges. So go on college visits. If you don't have the budget for college visits, you can also go on a college research excursion on your computer. It's not the same as visiting, but there's so much on the internet. You guys are so lucky. You can watch videos, you can watch YouTube for hours and see real students at real schools and try to get a feel for the differences in culture between different colleges in the US. You can read books, you can go get books like the Fisk Guide for Colleges or whatever it is. But however you wanna do this exploring, 
go and visit colleges and universities if you have the opportunity, especially if you're going to be applying early decision, because remember, that's not reversible. Even early action, you have to narrow the field. So if you're considering something for early action, I recommend you go and visit if you can, if you have the opportunity. And if not, just make sure you do a little bit more thorough research. Okay, now we are moving on from summer slash fall to fall. Okay, in the fall, you are going to need to submit your applications and all of the material that goes with that. When you submit your applications, there's going to be more checklists, so I'm not going to get into all the details of everything you have to do. For instance, you have to submit your official SAT scores, your official ACT scores to some schools, your AP scores, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll leave that just to the applications themselves. But submit your college applications, hold your breath, and wait. And there you go, fall. Winter, let's talk about winter. In winter, you may start to get some letters back from schools where you have applied early decision or early action if you exercise that option. If so, and you get deferred, it's a good idea to write a letter of continued interest to tell the school you're still into them. I know a lot of students who have gotten off deferral lists or wait lists. So if you're waitlisted or deferred, make sure you consider writing a letter if you're still interested in that school. We have a whole video on how to do that. You can check out as well. The next step in winter is to submit the rest of your applications. If there are any other schools that you need to apply to, if you haven't applied to your safety school yet, etc., now is the time to do it. January 1st is the deadline for most schools that are competitive. Some less competitive universities are going to have later deadlines, January 15th, February 1st, even March 1st for some colleges. But make sure that you submit by the deadline. For those colleges that do have later deadlines, I do recommend trying to get stuff in by January 1st because oftentimes you have a better chance of admission at some of them because they will fill their slots, right? Those rolling admission schools fill up their slots and then it gets harder to get in sometimes later. Spring. So once you get to spring, you're going to be getting some of these decision letters back and you need to consider those offers and research them. And that's step number one. After you've done that, you can also, if it applies to you, negotiate financial aid. Many students don't know this, but if you have a couple of different financial aid packages from different colleges, or if the financial aid package that a college gave you is not enough for you and your family to make it work, you can contact that college and tell them what you need to make it work. And sometimes they'll give it to you. The other thing you can do is you can like pit schools against each other. So let's say you have an offer from Harvard, but you'd rather go to Stanford. And Harvard's offer is more generous than Stanford's. Well, you can go to Stanford and say, hey, Harvard gave me X. Would you give me the same? Because if so, I'll go to Stanford. Otherwise, I'm going to Harvard. So you can also pit schools against each other and negotiate. Now, you can't lie. That's not a good idea because they might follow up and check. But you can negotiate your financial aid offers, which is a good thing to know because I know a lot of students don't realize that and they think what you see is what you get and that's not always the case. So be sure to ask, negotiate if you want, and the worst they can say is no. Next, if you're waitlisted to any schools that are higher on your list than where you got into, you can write waitlist letters. We have a whole video on that. And finally, make sure you submit your deposit on time. Don't miss that deadline in May to submit your deposit. Even if you're banking on trying to get into a waitlisted school, you still have to pay a deposit somewhere and you have to forfeit it. So it's kind of a sad situation if you get in off the waitlist, but that's just the way that it works. Cool, awesome. And finally, I'm gonna say two things you should be doing all year senior year. One is continuing to stay involved with activities, looking for leadership opportunities, looking for ways to stand out, looking for awards you can win, whatever you can do. Continue to push yourself on the activities circuit. Two, keep your grades up. It's really important that you do well senior year. Oftentimes colleges are going to be looking at your senior year grades, especially that first semester and even second semester. If your second semester grades don't line up with your first semester grades, colleges sometimes will rescind offers of admission. So be very careful, stay on top of things. And finally, have fun. Because how awesome is it that you've gotten to senior year? It's an accomplishment to have made it through the entire schooling system and be graduating and be on the precipice of your adult life. It's super awesome. So congratulations, you made it to senior year. Celebrate, have a good time, and I will see you guys next time on Super Tutor TV. Thanks so much for joining us. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and watch more videos. We have so many videos that will walk you through all of these steps in this checklist. So if you have not subscribed, subscribe to our video, subscribe to our mailing list, supertutortv.com slash subscribe. We'll keep you in the know. See you guys later.